Hello and welcome to Dot Dot Weekly. I'm Sophia in Hong Kong, bringing you a roundup of highlights from Dot Dot News. The annual sessions of China's national legislature and top political advisory body, known as the Two Sessions, closed on Sunday and Monday, respectively. Hong Kong delegates to the National People's Congress said that the things they learned at the National Two Sessions have opened their eyes and boosted their confidence in the development of both the country and Hong Kong, and they are keen to share their experiences with Hong Kong people as soon as they return to the city. Among all the issues, new quality productive forces was the most popular buzzword among the delegates while the related content about one country, two systems was their main concern. We, the delegates, will preach to the world and tell the good story of Hong Kong so that people will have confidence in this city, Delegate Chan Yong noted. Hong Kong will be safer than ever before, and human rights and the duties to such rights will continue to be observed and exercised in the city, said Junius Ho, Hong Kong's lawmaker, on Tuesday. Ho made the remarks in an interactive dialogue with the Special Rapporteur on the promotion and protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms while countering terrorism. Ben Sol at the 55th session of the United Nations Human Rights Council. He emphasized that Hong Kong has a constitutional responsibility to legislate on Article 23 of the Basic Law which has been neglected for the past 26 years since Hong Kong's return to the People's Republic of China in 1997 and will finally be fulfilled soon. Ho added that the majority of the public consultation submissions indicated support for its implementation. In response to questions raised by Legislative Council members, Security for Labour and Welfare, Chris Sun, stated in written replies on March 13 that the Top Talent Pass scheme has received an enthusiastic response since its launch at the end of 2022. As of the end of February this year, over 72,000 applications have been received with nearly 59,000 applications approved and approximately 44,000 individuals having arrived in Hong Kong. When combined with approvals from other talent admission schemes since last year, a total of approximately 108,000 talents have entered Hong Kong. Sun estimated that the Top Talent Pass scheme can contribute approximately 34 billion Hong Kong dollars in direct economic value annually equivalent to about 1.2% of the local gross domestic product. Film Art, one of Asia's largest film and entertainment content marketplaces, found international industry heavyweights showcasing their latest cinematic masterpieces and technologies in Hong Kong. As part of the month-long Entertainment Expo Film Art, or the Hong Kong International Film and TV Market, attracts some 750 exhibitors from over 25 countries and regions. Held from Monday to Thursday at the HKCEC, it features more than 30 regional pavilions. Encompassing 10 major events including film art, the Entertainment Expo is organized by the Hong Kong Trade Development Council and sponsored by Create Hong Kong, the Film Development Fund and the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region. Jimmy Lai Chi Ying, founder of the now defunct Apple Daily newspaper, lent 5 million Hong Kong dollars to a local activist to support the distribution of a global anti-China propaganda campaign. The propaganda was disseminated in 17 media outlets across 13 countries, as well as on Google and Facebook. The details emerged during a hearing in a Hong Kong court on Wednesday, the 44th day of Lai's national security trial. Great progress with the long-delayed legislation of Article 23 of the Basic Law was made on Thursday, with lawmakers completing their deliberation on the Safeguarding National Security Bill and its 40 amendments. Lawmakers on the bill's committee, who concluded their week-long clause-by-clause scrutiny of the bill on Wednesday, returned to work on Thursday morning to review the bill's 40 items of amendments submitted by the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region Government. After hours of discussion, 
Chairman of the Bills Committee, Martin Liao, announced that the review of the amendments had been completed, drawing the committee's work to an end. That's a wrap for this week's program. I'm Sophia in Hong Kong. See you next week. Bye-bye.